Hello everybody, my name is Kat Bowser. I'm your resident fantasy therapist and welcome to my channel. Those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. And those of you who are returning, welcome back. Um, for those of you who are new, my name is Kat Bowser. I am a licensed therapist, but I am also an author working on my first novel. And on my channel, I like to talk about what I consider to be the heart of any good writing project, which is the characters. And the heart of a good character is in their psychology. Uh, once a therapist, always a therapist. So you will find all kinds of different topics on my channel, ranging from tags that I do to um, in-depth diagnoses of um, different character tropes and plot tropes. Or for uh, example, this video, I want to talk about secondary characters. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive into what makes a good secondary character and what are some things you can do to improve yours. So first and foremost, let's clarify here. What exactly is a secondary character? Well, within fiction, you have your main characters, which are who we are following throughout the story. And then you have your secondary characters who are the ones that are involved with the main characters, but it isn't their story. So these are usually like um, a lover, a parent, a best friend, that kind of thing. And then you have uh, tertiary characters who are kind of the background characters, usually the ones that pop up for a chapter or two or a scene or two, and then we don't usually see them again. So, when it comes to secondary characters, these are usually the characters that suffer the most when it comes to fiction, and it's honestly for a pretty good reason, and it's usually because more focus is put on the main character, which is generally where you want it. But at the same time, that means that the secondary characters don't get as well developed as they should, and even if we're not following them for the plot of the story, they should still feel fairly well-rounded because they usually have a very strong impact in the story or on the main character themselves. So usually what we end up seeing is characters that are, I like to refer to it as perpetually tied to the main character and that's really where they suffer, is when they aren't their own character without the main character. Now you might think, well, if, the, if their job is to support the main character, isn't that a good thing? And not really, <laughs> uh, because they should still be their own separate identity to make them feel real. What we end up with then is characters that feel like their sole purpose is to be the main character's cheerleader, for example. So what are things that you can do to avoid this? And I am personally one of those who I like to dig into the background of every single character I do, even um, the tertiary characters that we don't see very much of. But that's just me. I recognize that not a lot of authors do that. However, you, there are a few tips that you can use on your secondary characters to make them feel more well-rounded without necessarily giving them an entire background. So I've narrowed down seven tips for rounding out your secondary characters. Okay, tip number one, what names do they go by and who calls them that? <laughs> and this might seem like an odd question, but if you actually think about it, we all have different names or titles that we go by from different people. Within our families, we usually have nicknames that only our mother would call us or only our father would call us. Among our friends, we have um, usually shortened versions of our name or sometimes just a pet name that your friends call you. This could be something as simple as when you greet your friend you say hey girl or something along those lines. And that's something that can help develop your secondary characters relationships outside of the main character or to strongly more strongly solidify their relationship to the main character. Um, I'll give you guys an example from my work in progress. Um, one of my favorite secondary characters is named Tony, but his real name is Antonius, and he hates it. <laughs> um, so almost every single person will call him Tony. His mentor calls him Tony, his best friend calls him Tony. Um, generally, 
most of the other adults he interacts with, his teacher calls him Tony at school. But there is one character named Defender Ramsey who refuses to use his nickname. He always calls him Antonius. And that drives him crazy. So that already sets up a brief animosity between these two. And that really helps to kind of push forward Ramsey's overall personality. Now, in regards to his friend, he is um, best friends with the uh, main character, or one of the main characters, Ani. And Ani, at first, doesn't have more than just Tony for him. They don't, he calls him Tony because that's what he prefers. But as the series goes on, he will develop his own term for him, his own name for him, as a way to demonstrate as they grow closer. And something I also like to do is Ani is the only one that can call him Antonius and not get punched in the face. Um, aside from the adults because, well, generally a kid isn't going to get away with punching an adult. But that doesn't mean that Tony's not going to tell him that um, he would gladly do it if he could get away with it. But his relationship with Chip with Ani, if Ani calls him Antonius, that, that's different because he's Ani. He's his friend. And so that's one way that you can set up kind of these relationships with different characters. Okay, tip number two. Give your secondary character a hobby outside of the main character. This is really kind of where the secondary characters suffer because they're usually so devoted to the main character or we only see them with the main character that we don't get to learn that much about them. And I'm not saying that you have to, you know, show us that, oh, they're a wrestling champ or, um, you know, hey, they're going on their, uh, their fifth track meet or whatever. But it should slip into conversation somewhere. Like, for example, um, I'll, use, um, I'll use Tony again. One of his hobbies is he adores blades, blades of any kind, knives, swords, whatever. He finds them fascinating. And when he's old enough, he wants to learn how to make them. And he has no interest in this whatsoever. So sometimes when these two are together, Tony will start talking about his favorite blades or swords or whatever. And then he kind of doesn't mean to be kind of phases out a little bit because he doesn't follow that interest. And sometimes he has to remind Tony, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. A knife is a knife to me. And it's just little bits here and there, like a sentence or two but it's enough to establish that they have a personality outside of the main character's um, connection to them. All right, tip number three, consider their values and the values of your main character. In counseling, we actually do this whenever we're working with couples. Um, it's called value um, comparison, essentially. And what it is, is we have people write down their top 10 values um, with number one being the one most bad, most important to you, and number 10 being the least important. And what's really important is the first five. The first five should be, if not the same, they should be very similar. They don't necessarily have to be in the same order, but they need to be there somewhere. So if I have um, uh, two characters, main character and a secondary character, and their first five values are vastly different, then it really doesn't make sense for them to get along as well as they should. So that means I need to switch things up a bit. Now, five to 10 values, that's where you can get a little different because you want them to be similar enough to get along if, if that's the relationship you're going for, or you want them to be dissimilar enough that their animosity at each other makes sense. So for example, again, a knee and Tony, um, Ani's top, really top priority is probably honesty. Tony's is, a, it's there, but it's about number four. <laughs> um, for, for Tony, his, his top priority is, um, probably justice or fairness, which is Ani's second. So they share the same value. They're just not necessarily in the same spot. And because they're not in the same spot, that means with um, Tony, 
I can have him do a little bit more lying than I would have a need do. A need cannot lie to save his life. He's horrible at it. Um, Tony several times will tell him, you need to learn how to lie. <laughs> but this is another good way to not only figure out what are things your secondary character values and, is, and holds dear to them, but also what they don't. Um, for Tony, he doesn't care at all about appearances, how somebody looks. Just doesn't care. Do, doesn't phase him, doesn't think it's important. Um, it's just it's just not high on his list of priorities. So that actually comes into play because Indy is a Silmuk, which is um, essentially an outcast. And because he's an outcast, his he looks very different. He's completely white. For Tony, he doesn't care because he doesn't care what people look like. Um, whereas there are other characters, um, for example, uh, Martin. He puts quite a bit of importance in appearance, as does um, Aldi. He also puts a lot of importance in appearance. So they have animosity with Ani from the get-go. And likewise, because one of Tony's um, values is friendship and justice, he's going to stand up for Ani if he gets picked on. So there you go. You've already established several more traits that you can use. Okay, tip number four. Give your secondary character their own personal goal outside of the main goal story. Now, this one can be just something mentioned, could be something brought up. Um, it doesn't have to be the center point, and in fact, it should not be the center point. But it's another way to kind of show that your secondary character has a life outside of their relationship with the main character. Um, so Tony, I kind of mentioned earlier, he wants to learn blacksmithing. He wants to learn how to make weapons. And his goal is when he gets old enough, which for them is about 14, 15, he wants to enter an apprenticeship to learn how to make his own blades, his own knives. And that's a small goal for him. So maintaining strong grades within his tutoring and um, his education are important because that means he'll be able to achieve his goal. And that can introduce a little bit of conflict um, because sometimes the goal of the main story is going to conflict with his personal goal and he has to make a choice. So again, anywhere we can add conflict is good and anywhere that we can add in a scenario where we see a little bit of who this person is outside of the main character. Someone, we get to see them separate. And I think it's important, if you can, to show the secondary characters without the main characters on occasion. Um, this is going to kind of depend on your point of view that you're using. Um, I personally use third person, so this is pretty easy. If you're using first person, not so much, but there's still ways to kind of shoehorn that in somewhere. So I just think it's important to establish that individuality. Okay, tip number five, kind of piggybacking off the last tip. What is the secondary character's role in the story outside of the main character? So what I mean by this is you definitely have secondary characters where their main job is to support the main character, which is fine, but that should not be their only role. What else do they do? What else do they offer? So um, Tony, for instance, is my sarcastic um, blunt, blunt, funny kind of character. So while he does support the main character and stands up for him, he's also the one that is very good at reading through bullshit. <laughs> um, he's a very good liar, so he can spot a lie. So when it comes to interactions with other cultures, other races, he's actually very important to have with you because if someone is trying to pull the wool off of your eyes, he's probably going to see it. So that is his role. Is I mean, I guess if you wanted to call him a lie detector, you could call him that. Um, I also like to kind of sometimes refer to him as a, a strategist to a certain degree. Not to the extent that like an adult would be, but enough that he kind of knows when someone is messing with you and when they're being on level with you. So I think establishing a role 
separate from supporting or opposing the main character is important in kind of helping them come into their own. All right, tip number six. Go ahead and run them through what I call the no title exercise. And this is actually something I use with all my main, all my characters. The no title exercise is one we use in counseling actually to help people kind of um, self-explore a little bit. And what it is, is you take a character and you have to describe them without using any titles. So you can't use father, you can't use brother, you can't use soldier, um, you can't use um, so-and-so's sister, so-and-so's best friend. You kind of get it. Instead, you're using just traits, strengths that they have. So you, can, you can't say someone is an artist, but you can say someone is creative. You can't say that someone is a martial artist, but you can say that they are skilled with, um, with their body. Um, things, things like that. And this is a lot harder than it sounds, actually. Um, with all my counseling techniques, I run myself through them. It's hard. It's hard. It took me a couple times to really get it down. But I think every time you run a character through it, you find yourself learning more about them. And if you hit a snag, it's kind of a hint to you, okay, I need to develop this character a little bit more because I don't know that much about them. And then last tip, aside from the main character, identify two to three other people that are important to your secondary character and why are they important. This can be family members, it can be other friends, it can be potential mates for them, whatever you want to use. Um, for Tony, this one is his mentor and his mother. His relationship with his mother is very strained. I'll put it like that. It's very strained because they don't have a lot in common. They don't really get along that well. Whereas his relationship with his mentor is very, very strong because he has been training with him for quite some time. He knows how he thinks. He knows how he talks. And as a result, his mentor understands Tony. So Tony may be a good liar, but he can't really lie to his mentor because he sees right through it. <laughs> um, and this is important, again, in establishing that life outside the main character. You don't have to go into detail about it. You don't have to um, have it be a center plot point, but it should still be there and there should be little hints of it every so often. So I don't necessarily spend a whole chapter talking about how Tony's relationship with his mother is, but I may have him mention offhand to someone that he and his mom had another fight or something along those lines. And it's just ways to give your characters more depth and more levels to them. And the more levels you have, one, it makes them more realistic, makes them more rounded, but two, it makes them a lot easier to write. The more you know about your characters, the easier it is to write them. Um, one of the best bits of writing advice I ever received, seventh grade, was make your characters real and they'll write the story for you. And that's something I stick to and I firmly believe in. And that's why I think doing steps like this to round out your secondary characters is so important. Okay, guys, so that was delving a little bit into fixing up and improving secondary characters. Hope you guys found some useful tips in it. As always, feel free to leave me suggestions or comments below. Um, if you enjoy this kind of content, Please make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. And I put up new videos um, every um, Thursday and every Sunday, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. And until next time, I hope you guys have a good one.